Hello everyone and welcome to our live stream service on Sunday the 25th of July 2021. Well, as I'm uh, recording this in readiness for the live stream, it's a really red hot day. I'm here at home um, and I've got all the windows open and there's not very much air that is blowing. Uh, we hope that you're comfortable wherever you're at. Um, we hope that you're safe and well. And uh, we just hope that this morning you will be able to connect with us wherever you are. We know that people join us on these live stream services from around the Gornal and Sedgley area and uh, also much wider afield uh, across the West Con uh, across the West Midlands, the Black Country, um, even across the country and a few people from even across the world. Wherever you are, you're very welcome to be with us. This morning, we're going to be thinking about the power of story. I wonder how many people you meet in a typical day. Well, if you're living on your own, perhaps, and uh, maybe you've got mobility issues, uh, maybe you don't meet very many people. Um, but if you're a, a, a nurse uh, in a hospital or a, a teacher in a school or have a role in a school, maybe you meet many hundreds of people in a day. Um, I love to watch people, don't you? I, I love when I'm on holiday to go and sit in a wayside cafe, have a cup of coffee and watch the world go by. I like to imagine who people are, um, where they're going, what they're doing, who they're meeting, what they're up to, what their lives consist of, um, whether they're famous or possibly even infamous, whether they've got a past that's a bit of juicy gossip that I don't know anything about. Um, I, I love to people watch. Do you know the thing that amazes me? We, we obviously, we all have bodies. We, most of us have eyes and arms and legs, etc. Um, we all have a story too. They're all different and yet somehow our lives are shaped by what goes on in our lives, both good and bad. So we're going to be thinking about that in our service as we go through. I hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you'll connect with God through it. Before we begin, we're going to sing some songs together and uh, we invite you to join with us. Um, if you're at home, you can probably sing out loud. Um, here in the church, we're going to be singing probably from behind our face masks. Uh, but anyway, we want the words to touch our hearts and for us to give God our praise as we do so. So we're going to sing for I'm building a people of power, an army of ordinary people. And Lord, I lift your name on high. Enjoy the worship. Thanks for being with us today.
And uh, thanks for joining us this morning. This morning I'm going to talk to you about something and what I'm going to talk to you about is here on the screen. Um, I wonder if you can work it out. Anybody work it out? Well let me try and give you a few little clues and then we'll fill it in as we go. Anybody got it yet? What I'm going to be talking to you about? Oh, okay. Well, let me go a little bit further and we'll see if you can get it now. I wonder if you can see, if you can make out the message. What I want to speak to you about today is the power of story. Every single one of us has got a story. Every single one of us. So let's make that word nice and plain so that we can all see it. Thank you. 
all of us have got a story. You've got a story, I've got a story, everybody's got a story. They're different, but we've got one. Let me tell you a little bit about my story. And the first thing I really want to talk about is my birth. Now you might say, Tim, everybody was born. How's your story different to anybody else's? Well, my story begins a couple of years before I was actually born, when my parents had a baby and lost a baby and um, they were devastated by it, but they decided that actually they wanted more. There was something more for them. They never gave up, they, never, they just kept persevering. And eventually, two years later, Tim was born. This is part of my story. Didn't affect me in, in anything. I didn't know about it for several years, but it's part of my story. I was born. Um, not only was I born, but of course, I've had a life. All of us have a life. All of us have done particular things. I've been uh, able to do all sorts of things in my life. I enjoyed doing Duke of Edinburgh as a teenager. Went to, the, uh, to, to Buckingham Palace. Before you could pay to go to Buckingham Palace, I went and received my Gold Duke of Edinburgh Award. Enjoyed it immensely. I've enjoyed all sorts of things. I've been to some lovely places in my life and enjoyed most of what I've done. I've lived. And of course, not only have I lived, but of course, I've had to is the W word. I've had to work. Now I started off as a trainee computer operator, then I got into business consultancy and training consultancy, then I went into sales, um, and I enjoyed all of those things, enjoyed doing all sorts of things in my life. But eventually, I felt that God was telling me that I'd got to do something different with my working life. I'd got to start telling people about the difference that Jesus made in my life and encourage them to trust Jesus for themselves. All part of my story. Tell people about Jesus, you say. About Jesus? Well, why is Jesus important? Well, he is important. Let's put his name up here. And Jesus is really, really important because, do you know, did you know this? Actually, we date our calendars from when Jesus was born. That means that for all of us, our history is actually based around the fact it's his story, Jesus's story. Jesus was born like I was born. Did you realize that actually before Jesus was born, there were dozens and dozens of predictions that were made about this promised baby that would come, this promised Messiah that would come? And he came. If I was to say somebody in our church was to meet somebody and marry somebody and then say where they would live and how many children they would have and what the names of the babies would be, it would be nigh on impossible for me to get more than two of those things correct. There were dozens of things that were correct as far as Jesus was concerned. Jesus was a very special baby. He was born and he came to earth for us. But he not only was born, he lived just as I lived. Jesus walked throughout Israel doing some amazing things. He gave, gave some incredible teaching. He did some amazing miracles. He turned water into wine. He walked on water. He healed the blind, the deaf, the dumb, the lame, those that were troubled by all kinds of evil spirits. Jesus did this. And the ordinary man and woman in the street, they loved him. But the ruling classes, they hated him. And they put him to death, death on a cross. It was an awful death. He suffered for hours upon hours, naked, on a cross, lifted up for all to see, with the breath in his body slowly being squeezed out of him. 
it was an amazing story. There were some people who met Jesus and he had an effect on their life. Let me tell you just about a few of them. Jesus met a woman in John chapter 4. She was troubled, you could say. Some people think she was a prostitute. We don't actually know whether that's true or not. She'd certainly had lots of men relationships, male relationships. And she was out of sorts with many of the people in the town where she lived. But she met Jesus and he absolutely changed her life. She rushed back into the town and told everybody, come and meet a man who told me everything I ever did. Jesus met a man called Andrew and he listened to Jesus and it changed his life. The first thing he did was to go and find his brother Peter and say, we found the promised one, the Messiah, the one who's coming to deliver us. Made a big difference to their life. So Jesus had, had a birth, he had a life, he had a death. And even though his death was cruel, it was so that we who believed in that death, we could be forgiven by God. And God was satisfied with that and raised him from the dead. So I want to tell you this morning that I am a follower of Jesus. My life and Jesus's life are linked. It's all part of my story. I'm a follower of Jesus. That's my story. But for a minute, let's not think about my story or Jesus's story. Let's think about somebody else. Let's think about Let's think about you. What's your story and how are you relating to Jesus? Can I tell you that the amazing story of Jesus can be linked to your story? You can have a link just as I've got a link to Jesus. How does that happen? Well, let me tell you how it happens. It happens by something that I've mentioned already. It's the cross. The cross is a pivotal point in all everybody's story. You can choose to accept it, you can choose to reject it. And there's a road that leads to the cross for every single one of us. We hear about the message of Jesus and we have to go via the cross to discover how we will relate to Jesus. Well, let me bring this little uh, message to a conclusion by telling you finally about three verses in the Bible. Again, I've got them under these bits of paper, so let me reveal them to you. The first one is found in John's Gospel, chapter 6 and verse 37. And it says this, and Jesus is speaking, and he's speaking directly to you and to me, and he says this, no one who comes to me will ever be turned away. You might feel sometimes that you're on your own. You might have been left by a partner. You might have never had a partner. You might feel that nobody respects you or loves you. But I want to say to you this morning, Jesus says, I'll never turn you away. And then in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, Jesus says, it's like I'm standing at a door and I'm knocking. And if you'll open the door, I will come in and have a relationship with you. That's good news, isn't it? And finally, Jesus says in Matthew 11 and verse 28, do you know what? If you're bowed down by life, if you're finding it all a big, big strain, Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Isn't that good to hear this morning? Isn't it good news that I've told you about? My story, Jesus' story, your story. 
you can know Jesus for yourself. If you'd like to know more about that, why don't you give me a call? Why don't you email me? Tim Coles at ugmc.org.uk. Hey, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us at our service this morning. I pray that that message will find a deep resting place in your heart. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus, a name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say You're worthy of every breath we could ever we live for you, oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and love. everyone and uh, let's now turn to our prayer time and uh, we'll look at three areas the world the UK and our fellowships so let's pray Heavenly Father we do thank you for the wonderful weather that we've been having over the past week or so uh, Lord, it's been wonderful to see the bright sunshine and the warm summer days. Lord, we thank you for the uh, the weather <clears throat> that's allowed us to be out and about. 
But we do realise that some people suffer quite a bit as a result of it and uh, we ask for your mercy upon them. When we turn to look at our world, Lord, we have a number of things that we can ask you to help with. Firstly, the European countries who have suffered flooding, particularly Germany. Lord, it seems to have taken uh, a swathe of Europe uh, by surprise. There are lots of people who are without houses and without jobs, without livelihoods. We pray that you will be with them and that you will lift them up and you will restore to them the things that they've lost. We remember too the uh, recent wildfires in Oregon which have spread across 300,000 acres. We are not sure about fatalities Lord but um, we do ask that you will put your hand upon that place in the US and that you will help those who are there to fight the fires and to um, keep people safe. Also, in Mumbai, in India, we hear of the recent monsoon, which has killed at least 30 people. Father, again, we pray for those who've lost loved ones. We ask for your peace and we ask for your peace on those who've lost houses and livelihoods also in India. In our home country Lord, the UK, we especially pray for the lifting of restrictions uh, in our Covid pandemic. Lord we know that things will happen that numbers will go up there will be greater numbers in hosp hospitals and in and in the death columns lord but we pray that you will flatten those spikes that you will bring it under control lord and that you will get so many more of these people who are refusing vaccines to get out there and get the vaccines so that they can be uh, protected in Jesus name we ask these things Lord and we come to our own fellowship at Upper Gornal and we continue to remember the Hemings family Ray and Margaret and their son Stephen who is again suffering from cancer and undergoing treatment for it. Lord, we do ask that you will bring healing into his body and bring peace to the whole of his family. So to Bill Caldwell's son David, who we heard have heard recently is again unwell. Be with Bill, give him peace, and give David your loving care that you will heal these uh, illnesses that he constantly undergoes. We continue to pray for Arthur and Maisie Bennett's son-in-law Mark after his illness and uh, we pray that he will progress quickly for Ron Hickingbottom uh, who's still suffering pain for Mercy who we know is still unwell and Armani and also for Judith Jones mom Lillian who is very poorly at this time Lord, we ask for your comfort, your peace, your love, 
and your healing. Father, meet them at their deepest needs, we ask. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
Well, that's been something for us to think about today, hasn't it? What's your story? Are you a follower of Jesus? Would you like to be a follower of Jesus? If you would, or you'd like to just ask some questions, you can email me, timcoles at ugmc.org.uk. Your story is very unique to you, but it would be great if you could link your story with his story and become a follower of Jesus. Well, I hope the service has encouraged you, maybe challenged you and helped you. We're going to complete our service this morning with a prayer. So let us pray together. Our God and Father, we want to thank you for all that you did in coming to earth. It was amazing that there were so many predictions and they all came true as you were born. We want to thank you for your life amongst us and how you showed us God. And not only that, encouraged us to believe in God. As we've partaken in the service this morning, would you help us to live our lives in such a way that they honour you and reflect you through our words and actions to those we come, uh, come across? We ask you to help our story to be a good story. And even when things go a little bit pear-shaped, help us to keep trusting in you and to sense your presence alongside us, strengthening us, leading us, guiding us as we go through those circumstances. So we commit ourselves to you for the rest of this week. Pray you'd be with us and help us to keep our eyes upon you. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus. And as we do that, we commit ourselves by saying the words of the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being with us today.